Okay, what about a parenthesis? A parenthesis, or you never use a parenthesis, it's always a pair, two parentheses, they always go opening and closing. And what is a parenthesis? Remember, a parenthesis is the opening and closing parentheses. So you can use the parentheses to set off independent clauses. For example, here, the patterns were statistically significant, C figure five. Because C figure five is like an independent idea here, we just put it inside the parentheses. When you use punctuation, it goes inside the parentheses for whole sentences. And punctuation goes outside parentheses for partial sentences. Also, you use parentheses in reference citations that are inside your text. So, for example, let's take a look here. Dumas and Dor, and here we have the date. So this is separate and a part of a citation, so we use parentheses. Reported is fully described elsewhere, Hong and O'Neill, 1992, because this is a citation. In the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, and then here we're going to have the specification of what we're addressing. The fourth edition text revised, DSM, blah, 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 all of these points here. So on this idea of punctuation goes inside the parentheses for whole sentences. So if you write a sentence and blah, 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 you have Jack and Jill ran up the hill, you have a whole sentence here, then your, per your punctuation, like maybe a question mark, or maybe a period, or maybe an explanation mark. It goes inside, if inside is a whole sentence. But if you write some of the sentence here, and then you end your sentence here, then your punctuation needs to go outside. So that could be a period, it could be a question mark, or other punctuation. So if inside is a whole sentence, then it goes inside. If it's not a whole sentence, then the punctuation must go outside. You can also use parentheses when you introduce an abbreviation, and I think this is the way we're all used to it. So inside your research paper, the first time you introduce a new abbreviation, for example, GSR. GSR, what does GSR mean? Galvanic Skin Response. So the very first time we mention it, First, you need to write out the whole idea, the whole three words. Then, inside parentheses, you write GSR. And then later, you always use GSR without parentheses. You just use GSR. But the first time, you must do it this way, the first time in your thesis. So in a series, for example, the subject areas included A, blah, 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 comma, B, blah, 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 comma, C. So this is a series. And how do we separate the series? Well, of course, we use the comma, as we've already studied. And for the last one, we use the conjunction and with a comma. But we also use the parentheses to enclose this one, two, three idea. And it could be one, two, three, A, B, C, or anything like this. I, 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 something like that. And remember, you need to have a space after and a space before. You also use parentheses in mathematical expressions, which I think we're all very familiar with. You use it to include citation page numbers or uh, page numbers for quotations. So for example, here, I write a quotation. The author stated, quote, the effect disappeared within minutes. Now, please note, right, we already studied this. A comma here because I'm going to begin a quote. This is an introductory phrase, and then here I have my quotation mark. This is exactly copied from the person's writing. Who wrote this? And then here I have my citation, Lopez, comma, 1993, comma, page 3111. So, here we have the parentheses that separate that, and specifically, we may have a, a chance that we have to tell exactly the page number, and we always, when we write page numbers like that, we're going to separate them, 311 page number. In this case, we're putting the page number with the author and the date. 
so it all goes inside. But if we only had page number, then we also use the parentheses just for the page number like that. Lopez 1993 found that the effect disappeared within minutes, and then here is just the page number, page 311, because here I have Lopez, I have the reference, I have the date, but here is the quote, and because the quote came from one special place, I need to cite exactly what page did the quote come from. You can enclose numbers for formulas and equations, of course. So that would be this idea here. This is formula number one, formula number two. Statistical values, of course, we also use parentheses. So when you're writing a value, for example, a P value, you separate it from the text using the parentheses. Always remember a space before the parentheses and then a space after. Unless it's the punctuation, then there's no space. You also use it in statistics for degrees of freedom. So for example here, the T value, 75 degrees of freedom equals 2.17. That is to say that the statistical value is 2.17, but the degrees of freedom or the sample size is in this case 75. Okay, we can also use parentheses, or we should not use parentheses, I should say, inside of parentheses, which gets very confusing. So if you have multiple parentheses, parentheses inside parentheses, that's something you should try to avoid. So something, 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 and then another one, something, something, and then this, something, 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 right? Do not do that, that's not a good idea. So how do we avoid that? The way to avoid that is shown here, when you have the parentheses inside, rather than use parentheses again, you use the square brackets, the brackets. So in this case, if I want to write a parentheses, and then inside I have something that needs parentheses, I use the brackets instead. Don't use parentheses back to back. So in this example here, we have parentheses, e.g. Defensive Permission, Norm and Cantor, 1986. And in this example here, we have the two parentheses here, because this is one case and this is another case. But actually, we can put them together and then in between use the semicolon. So that's another good example of the semicolon. Brackets. You can use black brackets to enclose confidence intervals. So for example, uh, here. And again, we have a nice example of the comma, comma and conjunction, serial. Words inserted in quotations. Now this is a little bit confusing, but here's an example of a quotation, right? We begin the quotation, we end the quotation. Hanish. This is exactly what I copied from Hanish. What did I copy from Hanish? What did he write? He wrote when behaviors were studied. He did not write this bit here, this piece here. He did not write this. Who wrote this? I put this in. So the bracket helps the reader to see inside a quotation you added something or I added something that changes the quotation. Why would I do that? To help make the quotation more clear, clear. Let's take a closer look at this example. When his own and others. I'm afraid that you won't understand that in Hanish's study, it was not just others data, but also his own data. So I put this in here to help the reader understand. That's okay, but you must include the bracket. Parenthetical material that is already inside of a parentheses. So for example, here I want to add something that would usually use a parentheses. But I can't use a parentheses. Why? Because I'm already inside of a parentheses, so you use the brackets as we've already mentioned. 
Okay, so brackets should not be taking the place of commas. When you use a comma, it's the serial comma or for your references of the APA or MLA style, do not be using brackets instead. So you would not be doing something like this. This is not right. You don't want to be using brackets for all of your statistical measurements either. It was a special case that you were using them for. Normally you would be using your statistical measurements with your degrees of freedom and other kinds of measurements with the parentheses. And here we have an example, uh, how to ex explain this example. Let me clear this and we get a good idea. We use a comma here and then we have our statistical information. Because our statistical information is not just one little piece, it actually have, has multiple parts to it, which is the F value and then the P value. So what I'm going to do is not enclose this at all, but just write it with a comma beforehand. If you were to use a parentheses, then you would, how would you separate this bit out here? You have to use a bracket. But that's very confusing because remember, degrees of freedom, we can use the parentheses like this. So you just avoid this problem altogether by not using the parentheses at the start. Okay, a slash. So we're often used to using a slash because we use it in a slash or a backwards slash like this with uh, web addresses and internet addresses. So when can we use a slash? Well, we can use a slash when we're putting two words together, such as here, the classification slash similarity. There is no space before, no space after. Now, why do we use it here? The reason is because we have this compound or hyphenated word here, similarity judgment condition. So this idea of judgment condition has two cases, similarity judgment condition and classification judgment condition. In other words, this word here goes with judgment and this word here goes with judgment. But because it's using a hyphen, we don't want to write it out twice. We don't want to write the classification judgment and the similarity judgment conditions. Okay, it's a little bit confusing. So in the case that you have this hyphen, you can go ahead and combine the two words that go before the hyphen together by using the slash. Of course, numerator and denominator we often use in math, very simple. And of course, for the per idea. So here, 0 0.5 degrees per second. So this uh, every second. Every kilogram. And also you use this when you want to uh, cite republished work. So if you have somebody's book or somebody's, well usually this would be a book for republishing, and the book may have multiple publishing dates. So maybe it was published in 1923, but it was also published in 1961, uh, published again, republished. You can use the slash. No space before, no space after. Don't use a slash when a phrase would be clear. In other words, don't put words together with a slash when you can make it clear. So here's an example. Each child handled the ball, handed the ball to her mother or guardian. Not each child handed the ball to her mother slash guardian. You see that? You see the case here? Mother or guardian. Mother slash guardian. In this case, the child handed the ball. It was probably many children doing this situation. Some handed it to the, their mother, some handed it to their guardian. But the individual child handed it just to the mother or just to the guardian. So you cannot say slash because then it would sound like the child took the ball and then gave it to the mother and then gave it to the guardian. Or maybe gave it to the guardian and then gave it to the mother. So you have to be careful not to combine words with slashes in that kind of case. Here's an example of when you would not use a slash. Test 
retest reliability, not test retest reliability. Because what we're saying is that this is a kind of phrase, this is an idea, it is a test retest. It is not a test or retest or a combination of both or sometimes test, sometimes retest. It's not that way. It's very clear. It's a test, then a retest. And other kinds of compound measurements or ideas that we often use in science, such as um, hours or milligram. Well, that's a little bit overwhelming, isn't it? A lot of detail, but really not that many when you think about it. The key to remember is the commas, the periods, the parentheses. These all have rules you can follow. You may want to look at some examples. You may want to get the APA manual and look at examples they have. If you're targeting a journal, look at the journal example. In our class, we're going to be doing some online writing assignments where I can help you to get feedback. Practice is the best way to get this down. And next, we're going to be looking at some examples.